What is the biggest mind F you have ever experienced? Mongols fought Japan and Austria at the same time. Neither of them were aware of the other's existence for over 100 years. On a similar note, feudalism in Europe and in Japan was extremely similar, yet they had no connection whatsoever. I'm red green colorblind. My whole life, I've thought that peanut butter was green. Peanut butter isn't green. I'm colorblind. I just asked my girlfriend to compare peanut butter to the colors of other foods. I am now sad. I had a dream once where someone told me I didn't exist. And you know how in dreams people can say or do crazy crap and you'll still absolutely believe them? Well I absolutely believed this guy telling me I didn't exist. And it was like system error. I mean, how can you not exist if you're aware of yourself thinking? But absolutely believing it caused me to flip out and I woke up immediately in total shock. Blind people don't see blackness. They see nothing. I just can't wrap my head around this. Like what? We sent a man to the moon before we started putting wheels on our luggage. 1903. Wright brothers go on first flight. 1969. Apollo 11 lands on moon. 66 years. I think this counts. My dad got me a wireless mouse for my laptop. It stayed in its plastic because I had no need for it. One day I was working with Excel and got frustrated with my mouse pad. I opened the mouse, plugged in the receiver and used it for a bit. I wondered how long it would last and which batteries it needed when it ran out. The package didn't say so I opened the bag. No batteries were in the mouse. Then, it stopped working completely. That was, of course until I put new batteries in. I decided to chalk it up to a malfunction in the matrix and didn't ask too many questions in case the adjustment bureau came and got me. We are either alone in the universe or we are not. Both ideas are equally terrifying. Arthur C. Clarke. Forever will go on forever. There will be a time where this moment will be 1 billion years ago. The atoms that are currently you will still exist 1 billion years from now. Just more spread out. Not knowing your boss has an identical twin and having him walk up while you're talking with him. The fact that every time you remember an event your mind slightly alters that memory. Therefore everything you remember is not actually true but a slight fabrication of your imagination. The only true memories you have are the ones you haven't actually thought about yet. I mostly get this thought while I'm driving but my biggest minfuck is that other people around me live their lives every day and I don't have a clue what's going on. For example, I'm driving and look over to the car next to me and think who is that person? Where are they going? What have they been doing today? Do they have some soul destroying secret? It just really makes me think how many people are in the world that I don't know about. The last time the Cubs won a World Series, the Ottoman Empire was still a thing. The human body is actually like one big donut. Think about it, you have a long tube going from your mouth and out your butt, so the inside of your large intestine is the outside of your body. I remember when they taught us this in pharmacy school it was like a huge epiphany for me and I wondered if anyone else's mind was blown. Essentially your entire GI tract is considered the outside of your body when it comes to infectious diseases. Equally impressive is we only have like 5 sphincters keeping things going in the right direction. Once, I caught a fat brown spider in my dad's garage. Being afraid of spiders and weirdly proud that I had caught one. I kept it in the Tupperware that I caught it in and put it on my dresser. It sounds weird, I know, but I was a weird kid. After a week or so, he stopped moving entirely and I assumed he was dead. Also being very lazy, the Tupperware with my dead spider stayed on my dresser and got buried underneath clothes, papers, ect. After another month, I found that it had made a huge stain in the Tupperware. I didn't want to have to admit to my parents that I had ruined a Tupperware by keeping a goddamn spider in a box until it left a death stain, so I hid it under my bed. Flash forward to a full year and a half later, I'm watching South Park, and I hear a loud and creepy scuttling sound. I dig through my room trying to find the source, when I find the spider in the stained Tupperware. It's freaking out, like doing backflips and scuttling as fast as it can to try to get out of the Tupperware. The spider came back to life. It went into a dormant state, then woke up and flipped out because it was trapped. We're lucky enough to not have much light pollution where we live. I love looking at the stars on a clear night. It boggles my mind that I'm actually seeing the past. 
can only handle it for 10 minutes tops though before I feel so overwhelmed with how insignificant we are I have to go inside and hug myself while eating ice cream. The Truman Show. I saw it when I was about 10 so I was pretty much looking behind mirrors and random objects trying to find a camera, and it also made me question the way people were treating me. Think about this. If you are Truman, everyone has seen everything you've ever looked at online. Everything. Trying to figure out what reality is or why it even exists. Like, consider if we take the universe as we know it, and magically take out all the matter and antimatter and energy etc. We are left with empty space. But that's still something, isn't it? So, if we take that away, what would there be? It wouldn't even be nothing. It would be less than nothing. It just wouldn't. How could there be nothing? How could there be anything? When I think about how far technology had come in the past few decades. For real. The other day I was looking at pictures of Mars on my phone when it hit me how advanced we are. Pictures of another planet. In my hand. That I can choose to see at any time. Ro. When I was a little little kid. We had a cabin on a small river in Vermont. It took about an hour to get there. Way out in the middle of nowhere and was always fun for my sisters and me. We liked car trips and would play little games the whole way. The cabin is the source of my happiest childhood memories, swimming and fishing and cooking marshmallows over a fire and stuff. When my parents divorced, the cabin was a casualty, sold and split between them. Much later, in high school, we started hanging out and partying on the small river that runs into my town. Further upstream so it's unpolluted and lovely and away from the attention of the cops. One day, while tripping and wandering up the river in an inflatable kayak, we came across the cabin my family owned. Impossible my brain said that place is why I up near Bellows Falls at least. This just looks like it. A lot like it. Getting out and investigating. There were familiar things. Obviously the landscape. But the angle of the porch. The driveway. Everything. Exactly the same. I wasn't sure if it was true or the acid. Later I asked my mom, where in Vermont was our summer cabin? She took a deep breath and explained. It's actually only about 10 minutes away. We used to drive up into Vermont and circle back on dirt roads because it calmed you and the girls down so much. Temporal distortion realized. Mind fricked. Also mint fuck. My whole family is from Bellows Falls, Vermont and I have heard this story before. White chocolate milk. It's pretty common but it gets me every time. When at a red light, or parked in a parking space, and the car next to you starts backing up, and if everything is aligned right it feels like you're moving and then you flail around and your BP spikes and then you realize you're not. I was sleeping off a migraine, and I had a dream I woke up alone in the house. I walked past my sister's room, and their door creaked, kept walking up the hall, walked to the kitchen and opened the fridge, not much in there, so I went to the sink to get a glass of water, the sink was filled with blood, I turned around, creeped out, and saw one of my sisters strung up in the pantry, dead, suddenly, a man dressed all in black stepped out, lunged at me and started stabbing me repeatedly in the chest whilst laughing, I woke up from this dream, creeped out as frick, Got out of bed, the house was empty, I walked past my sister's room, and their door creaked, kept walking up the hall, walked to the kitchen and opened the fridge, not much in there, so I went to the sink to get a glass of water, the sink was filled with blood, I started to cry and I couldn't turn around, because I knew what was coming, suddenly, the phone rang and it was my dad asking if I was awake. I wailed at him for leaving no note and oh god why was there blood in the goddamn sink? He calmly explained he was defrosted meat in there to roast earlier and I should stop being such a coward. It still creeps me out. I was lucky enough to see Fight Club without anyone spoiling it for me and it was certainly the biggest movie min frick for me. Another one is saying out loud, a noise a noise an oyster. A noise, a noise, a noister. The face of Bo, they used to call me. There are colors out there in the world that some animals can see but we can't. Christmas 2001 my father told me that my grandfather had been diagnosed with a brain tumor. Because, yay, Christmas, family fun time. I was 12 at the time. He was operated in January 2002, but the operation did not succeed. The cancer had spread too far, 
My grandparents lived far away which made a visit impossible. So I sent him a letter to the hospital. A month passed and he was still doing good for his condition. I kind of and I feel really bad saying this. Forgot about the whole situation. Then in February I got a fever. When I went to sleep that night I dreamt that I met my granddad near a seemingly never ending field in the countryside. We walked along a path in the middle and talked. The sun seemed to be setting the whole time. Then we got to a house. We went in and there were all these people. He introduced me to them. One of them, I recall, was his mother. He said he was going to live with them from now on. The next day my father called me to tell me my grandfather had died the night before. I had deja vu of having deja vu. My brain hurt trying to understand it. I read here several months ago that when your life flashes before your eyes, it's really your brain quickly going through past experiences, trying to figure out how to deal with what is happening. Yesterday I was listening to a Neil deGrasse Tyson podcast and he was talking about the number of planets in the universe, and basically he says this, turns out binary trinary star systems are very common, because of the unstable nature of these systems. Planets are likely to get thrown out of orbit from these, making those planets rogue. Dark planets just flying through space. A lot of those planets are geologically active, meaning they are creating heat from within. But recent discoveries on Earth have revealed that it is not necessary to have a sun to have life. Life needs a source of energy, so whether from a sun or from within the planet, it is possible for life to exist. So that means it is possible that there are an untold number of dark planets flying through space, undetected, without any other celestial bodies near them, and there is the possibility that some of these have life on them. Try to imagine that. Whilst playing hide and go seek when I was little I found out if I could see mom in the mirror, she too could see me. That blew my 3 year old mind. I think this was when I discovered that I was a person. Every action and decision we make is influenced by the sum of our experiences, memories, influences and the environments we've been exposed to, all of which at a simplified basic level are actually events or elements caused by the decisions of other people. These decisions were in turn caused by another sum of experiences, memories, influences etc of those people. Doesn't that at some level make everything kind of predictable if we were able to map every single influence? On a related note, if every decision we make is influenced by things in our past, most of which were beyond our control, what does that say about free will? The matter in my body and brain is changing, yet I am the same person. For example that pop tart I ate yesterday is now remembering things I did 7 years ago. In Duck Hunt, player 2 can control the ducks. Also, if you go far enough away with the gun, you will hit the ducks every time as long as you're aiming somewhere on the TV. We pee and crap in clean water. The time difference between when Tyrannosaurus and Stegosaurus lived is greater than the time difference between Tyrannosaurus and now. You've been visited by the toothpaste man for good teeth and fresh breath comment oh fresh. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.